The following program is a work of fiction intended to educate and astonish the YouTube community. It has been carefully edited to conform to all YouTube guidelines and any resemblance to any real contests, prizes, phone contacts, websites, or historical figures is purely coincidental. Previously on Seattle Rock Today. You are now playing solitaire with your specially designed Swami Astrananda commemorative tarot deck. You will now pull up the card, the Queen of Pentacles. I repeat, the Queen of Pentacles, which will propel you into a deep and lasting hypnotic sleep. Welcome back, Haridans. Welcome back, Nymphets. Welcome back, everybody. And I want to give you a big shout out to all you folks out there who called in, who emailed in, who texted in your choices for the next episode that we're going to check out of I'm Carlos Now. The hottest thing on the internet. The hottest thing on the internet. But hey, I've got something special for you. Just for you. You're sitting back there on the couch. You got something good to drink? Yeah? Little finger, maybe something? Well, that's right. Whatever it is. Yeah? Whatever toots your horn. That's right. Well, I've got a surprise for you today. And I want to thank, officially, I want to thank Mick and Minnie downtown for pulling the strings to get us, wow, one of the hottest new acts in music and one of my personal favorites. Today, on Seattle Rock Today, 93.93.93, we have Rod Munch of Munch and Wolf. How cool is that? How cool is that? I can't wait to see him. I love his work. Why? I think he's better than Chico Hamilton. He's the best. He's the best drummer out there in rock today. I'm Mr. Mr. Parker. Oh, huh? Mr. Parker. Yeah. Do you know? Yeah, you know, Do you know uh, which closet the uh, the rest of the deli roll is in? Because uh, Rod Munch's entourage is kind of hungry. Do you, do you, do you know? Rod's hungry. We'll feed him. Yeah, um, I think I think Rod's okay. We got him. He's already munched, but but is his his. No 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 no. Hey, listen. I'm a I'm a big fan. I have a pastrami sandwich, in the closet. Just offer him my pastrami sandwich. He'll go for it. It's good. It's good. M Mississippi ham. Pastrami to the off Rod. You got it. You got it. Rod's ready to go anytime you are, Mister uh, Mister Parker. Okay. Well, um, bring him on in. Hey. All right, here's Rod Munch. Okay. Hey, Rod. Good to see you. Yeah, how's it going, man? Wow. Oh, it's 
good to finally be on the show. Well, thank you for uh, Mick and Mooney downtown pulling the strings to get this uh, young man. He's a star. My goodness. Now, I, I know you didn't start with Chico Hamilton, but uh, Philly Joe Jones, you, you got his licks down, I know. Well, I've been to Philly once, yeah. Philly Steak, okay. Yeah, yeah, we played okay. a couple of nice games. So tell me, tell, tell my big audience out there, Rod, what what are your influences? I mean, who's been who's been moving and grooving inside that uh, you know um, strip club you got wearing on your chest? Well, you know, I have to say, you know, being related to the great painter uh, Edvard Munch. Oh, you are really like. Well, let's 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 give a big scream for the TV. I, I'm not gonna do it, but okay. I trust that yours is good enough. Okay. Uh, that really influenced me more than uh, any music that I have listened to. But, uh, you know, Black Flag definitely did Black something. Flag? Yeah, you know, but... What about, uh, what about Iggy and the Stooges? I mean, uh, Iggy, uh... Yeah. I kind of, you, well, you know... You know, Raw Power. But I don't know about anything after when he, you know, tried to sound like Bowie too much. And, you know, fuck that. I really like, I really like Iggy in... Uh, Dead Man? Yeah. Oh, he was great in Dead Man. Hey, you done any... Uh, you, tell the folks, tell the folks, uh, you done some films, some movies, or something like that? Well, me and Eccles, we've had some offers. Uh, you know, we worked with Jarmusch. Uh, you right, know, right. upcoming project. Okay, Jarmusch, but, uh, yeah. you know, I've heard he's kind of tough to work with, so we think he may be going more mainstream, you know. Oh, I... Uh, you, you got your sights on Hollywood, you thinking? Yeah, you know, Spielberg's working on a couple interesting things. Okay, uh, okay. Well, I, I really love the videos you put together, too, with your music, man. It's all really, thanks, man. It's really, you do it yourself, or you got somebody in your team? Oh, yeah, you know, we, we got we got a couple guys we work with, you know, yeah. uh, around town. Uh, you know. I got you. Yeah, wow. Wow. Yeah, I, I mean, I really... Um, I, I really dig that one cut you made, Dead Millennium. My goodness. That oh, was, you like that one? That was, I mean, that, that, that pause of silence between the third and fourth beats, you know, I just, God, I just get filled with, with dread. I, it's incredible. Yeah. It's yeah. almost as bad as when my Porsche broke down. I felt uh, almost sure the that, same thing. I'm sure that was a tragedy. Yeah. Um, oh, God. But Dead Millennium, you know, I was like, we were up and we found this opium den in uh, St. Paul. And we were right. there, like, for about three days. And when we finally left, we made our way to a studio. Right. Uh, you know, like, not too far from uh, the den. And came up with just the opening riff that you hear. Oh, really, like, man, heavy, that's, that's heavy. That's, heavy that's, that's fucking heavy. opening riff right But there. did you know that in the Porsche, in the transmission of the Porsche, there's like a little plastic, yellow plastic, it's called an inverter converter, and it's it's like designed to fail just when you drive it exactly 25,000 miles. I mean, it's insidious. I don't know if all you Porsche drivers out there, beware. Big Daddy told you that 911, it won't go past 2501. I'm telling you. Now, well, uh, I've been driving a Chevelle for many years. And oh I'm yeah. Pretty happy with that, I have to say. Right. Well, you got a big, you got a big tour van and all that stuff. Yeah. Like that. Well, yeah. that too. Yeah. But now tell me, what um, back in my day, you know, when I used to do a little thing, you know, <laughs> with the uh, the status seekers back in Port Portland. Um, you know, we used to have groupies. You got groupies these days? Or oh, was... probably more groupies than you got. Oh, well, I mean, it's, yeah, uh, you got to uh, kind of beat them off, you know, like, yeah, you know. Yeah, well, you know, things have changed, you know, but... Uh, now, did you, now, in my time, you know, we had, we had the this group. It was called the Daughters of the Plaster Casters. Now, have you ever heard of the Daughters of the Plaster Casters? I think I might know one or two. Okay, well, the Daughters of the original Plaster Casters, they would go, like, on airplane flights, and, like, when Jimi Hendrix was on the plane, or, you know, some of the stars, they would make up, you know, they would, well, you know what they would do, folks, but they would set them up, and then when they got nice and big, then they would do a plaster cast, and then 
My God, you know how much they're worth now? They're millions, millions, I'm telling you. I'm sure. I mean, back in Atlanta, whoo! I mean, are you into art at all, Ron? Well, like I said, you know, being related to uh, Edward. You're the great, yeah. great grandson, or yeah, yeah, wow. Yeah, in fact, that's how me and Eccles we met at an art exhibition. Is that right? Yeah, a right, print, right. Print, the uh, scream. Yes, the scream. Oh, but even some of his other stuff is really macabre. I mean, even the the naturalistic. I mean, there's something, you know, like everything's haywire. Uh, yeah, but you're fine. I can tell you're fine there, boy. You, yeah, you got yeah. a number one single. What no, do you got coming can't up? Can't complain. You got some big uh, tours coming up? Yeah, we might be going to do Japan. Jap oh, I yeah. bet you. I bet Our you. Our single's doing pretty well over there. Right. Yeah. Right. But you know, it's right. just one thing at a time, man. You know. No, I understand. You gotta have time for yourself and your life. Uh, yeah. Hey, Gary, did you find that uh, pastrami sandwich, or was it a ham sandwich? I forget. Anyways, thanks for mixing me. Mix and Minnie had just sent this star. Yeah, thanks, from, uh, yeah. Mitch and Murray. Uh, yeah, appreciate Mitch and Murray, you yeah, yeah. bringing me down. And, right, uh, that's... Happy uh, to be here with the legend. Uh, right, Jackson. well, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan. I may be a little, you know, out of touch, but I'm, I'm a big fan, Ron. I'm a big fan. Hey, whatever happened to my producer, man? He's supposed to be doing something now. Oh yeah. Garrett, what's going on over there? Oh, we're just we're just uh uh uh, uh I, I think uh you guys were uh, uh come on in here, come on in here. We gotta have you know, come on in. Was Don't that the shy. guy with the soul patch that I saw? Yeah, yeah, on, yeah, yeah. He's my producer. He's a great producer. Oh, man. Maybe I think he's I, a great. Yeah. Uh oh uh Rod Rod I uh. uh Oh my, oh, oh, oh sh I really shouldn't be out here, but uh, I'll be out here. Rod, I, I just, you know, a big fan of yours, and uh, uh, back in your days when you were in Chopper, uh, I was Oh my if, God, dude, is that what I think it is? It's a Chopper 45. Uh, uh, here, here you go, here you go. Come oh, on, a come Chopper over, come on over, come on over, come on over. Just, just wondering if... Uh, if uh, you, you, you'd, you'd be willing to want to sign it for me here. Oh man, I don't know, man. That like that's like my my first band, man. I was like I was like eighteen and like high off quaaludes when I made this. So I don't know, man. I don't know if it brings back the memories, but you know, maybe later, man. Okay, you know, later, you know, later. Yeah, yeah, sure. Tow truck. I, I, I heard something about they're towing my car, but I, I'm I'm just gonna call the impound. One. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, it's probably a good idea. Hey, Rod. So you, you, you were in some bands before when you were like in high school? Yeah, we just said tow truck though. It reminded me uh, of this great show I've been watching. And I was glad you uh, showed it on your, your show uh, last week, which was- I'm uh, Carlos now. I'm Carlos now, you? man. Oh man. That's like I'm my favorite you're... show right, right now. Right, I'm glad you're a superstar. I'm so glad you're on it because is, isn't it weird? Isn't it just like, it, it doesn't make sense until it makes sense. I mean, Big Daddy, he had a hard time with it, I have to say. But when I got it, when I got the secret, I go, whoa. Yeah, this, man. This is talk about art. I mean, this is art. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Sometimes you think the scene's going to end, and then it goes on for about another 45 minutes. You know, I always think that's pretty deep. Right. That you That know? is, yeah. Yeah, wow. Yeah, right. it's pretty deep, man. So you did you... Uh, we were going to show some clips. Did you talk to uh, Gara? Did you get some clips? Oh, uh, Mr. Us? Parker, uh, Eileen's got it all queued up. It's that uh, tow truck thing. Uh, oh, the tow truck. Right, yeah, from... Was that is that a good one? That's a great, That's great a scene. Great, great scene. Okay. Yeah, you gotta cue that up. Hey, let's roll it. I'm Carlos now. The tow truck scene. Go for it. Tow trucks. Really. If you think about it, collecting is a large part of Texas Red's oeuvre because the idea of collecting personalities from history and then translating them into a metaphysical portrait is not that dissimilar from collecting things like albums from stamps, from vintage tow trucks, or anything <laughs> that one might think to collect over the course of history. I know that I heard a story once that Texas Red collected, collected vintage wristwatches that he bought across all of America on his honeymoon. This was the site of Texas Red's first spray work on train cars. He used to spray them here in wonderful Hastings on Hudson 
and then they would go all the way down into Manhattan on the Metro North. Using this, he was able to get his message across from all the way upstate, all the way into the city. And this is the way that people first started seeing his tags, which were really a product of the train's passing, of mobility, of the train, as you see here, which was once driven by Texas Red. These very Metro North cars bore the rocket TR in the late 80s. Texas Red is truly a unique and remarkable painter. By taking one horse brand and applying it to so many different characters from history, he crafts a new narrative of metaphysical characters, a metaphysical language, if you will, that goes beyond what you normally see in galleries, what you see at museums, which is really just ego imposed onto the canvas. This new and vital way of thinking about painting will be seen down the road as a truly remarkable break from the history of art as we know it. Wow, what a great scene, man. I love the part when the train goes by. Welcome back, Sevens. <laughs> yeah, welcome, welcome back, Pythias. I mean, there's something about these scenes from I'm Carlos now. That train going into New York, that started the whole, that whole art movement. The, the, that's tagging. Yeah. That was Texas Red started yeah, the man. tagging. Yeah, yeah, totally. Whoa, whoa. I mean, you're into art. I mean, it's just, it makes sense. It's just like, it comes out of nowhere. I mean, all that art that's, that they, they claim is, you know, it's it's not real stuff. I mean, this is the real stuff. When it starts, you know, right here, right, you know, right in the gut. That's mm. what I'm saying. Yeah, man. Yeah, 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 you're right, you're right. And uh, in fact, it reminds me of this other scene, too, I really like where... What's that? Uh, there's like a, like a western village and uh, Texas Red is talking to his art dealer. Who's this like, oh, right. cocaine snorting uh, New York type? Okay, and, well, uh, let's see. You know, I could really relate to that, um, you know, character. Well, I I grew up with westerns. I always thought that westerns was how the real world works. I'm trying to be as western as I can be right here. Yeah, I heard about like some they're talking about called the Western Way Institute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's all of that, but. Um, I mean, you don't have to be an ABC Damien to understand that there's some real art going on and there's some really crazy stuff going on on YouTube. This is another clip from I'm Carlos now. Roll it, Gare. Well, things you see, seem like things are on track pretty much. I mean, the Russian money's going down, but maybe the Chinese money. Anything there? Yeah, yeah. I talked to a couple uh, Chinese entrepreneurs who came through the other week. They were okay. asking about Hippenberger, Warhol, the usual kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I turned them on to some TR. And, okay. You know, we'll kind of see where it goes from there. Okay. I think they like the Van Gogh. They're looking at the oh. Van Gogh as a possibility. And Did you talk any numbers or? Yeah, we started to, and then the kind of the conversation changed, and they were going back, oh, how about this Rocher print, this Alex Katz, you know, the big names uh, you know, right now. They're just, the new, the new boys, you know, they're new to the game. They they're don't know anything. It. Yeah, exactly. They just, you know, all they do want to do is just kind of run the numbers. I got gotcha. you. So. I got you. Well, I really appreciate all the work you've been doing for me. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great job. Doing yeah. a great job. And I was, I was going to mention to you that, uh, yeah. you know, someone was coming by, met up with me in New York, caught me kind of off guard. They were like asking about you, but didn't seem like a client. Didn't seem like someone interested in the art. It seemed like someone who was, I don't know. Well, was he, dressed, was he dressed in black? I mean, was he talking about going to other planets or something? Weird stuff like no, that. No, it was, it was just really formal. Like when was the last time you saw Texas Red? Was he oh. at the Cindy exhibition? What did he say there? That kind of stuff, you know? Huh. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I just kind of said, oh, I don't know. I don't know what he's doing. He's painting somewhere right. in Europe or something. You know, I didn't go too much into it, but I don't know. Okay. This is the first time that happened. 
Yeah. Well, I would put any stock in it. I mean, yeah. there's nobody looking for me, really. But we could get some people looking for me. I mean, I, if it's if you think it's in our advantage, really. I don't well, know. I don't know. It just it depends what kind of interest. You don't want the, the wrong kind of interest going your way either. Unless there's no wrong kind of interest. I bet those nails are a couple hundred years old. They look like awesome. original nails to me. And the windows, too. Wasn't this one of the first settlements out here? Yeah. And it's it's one of the one of the first. Uh, it, it's part of the Western Way. It, this is kind of where the Western Way started. But wasn't this whole thing been redone though? Like if this is not the original um, building. No, I think it's 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 all a simulation, but it, it's uh, it looks good though. Yeah, I mean we should do like a, you know one of those installations with some TR within the old Western Town. Oh, I like that. Why not? Yeah, why not? Just do like kind of like set up some old like you know. Well, the one thing we haven't really thought of, you know, is um, actually doing Western art. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like well, Remington real. and that kind of stuff. We never have actually done that. I mean, sure. I mean, cowboy art. I mean, I, I know it sounds a little perverted, but that's a little catch. It might. It'll work. probably sell. Okay, I mean, like some. Sheep and cows and goats and stuff. Yeah, a little western land, desert landscape. Desert landscape. Yeah, why not? Okay, I can see that. Welcome back, Spelunkers. Welcome back to Seattle Rock today. We're having a great show. We got Rod Munch from Munch and Wolf here with us today. I'm, I, I am, I am truly honored. I want to thank Mitch and Murray downtown for fixing this up i mean i think we're square now i think we're square. fuck mitch and murray <laughs> fuck them <laughs> fuck you <laughs> fuck mitch fuck murray no come on they're they're, they're they're great mitch and murray are great i mean i you know i used to sell porsches and now now look at me i mean i'm, I'm hit the big time just because of mitch and murray you guys are great don't pay attention to what my guest <sighs> anyways um you know, those two, that last clip, um, that was kind of interesting, I thought, you know, about trying to sell art. I mean, you've got a big manager, you've got a big label, but it wasn't easy back in the day, was it? No, no, it wasn't easy at all, man. We just we had to press up our own records. And, Did you have you know, a, like a, uh, some sort of, um, what do they call them, uh, a console? What, 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 uh, how did you make, you made your own records in the basement? No, we used to use this bootlegger out in Long Island, you know. Oh, okay. PRI. Okay. You know, they used to do okay. a lot of local punk stuff, you know. Wow, wow. Wow, well, that's a big, wow, this is good. Wow, I'm just looking at the numbers. We've got more, we got more listeners to this show than we've ever had before. we got 600 and... 600 and... 79,000, ho, oh, we got an audience factor of about 79% in the Seattle. Thank you. Thank you, my Haradans. Thank you very much. Hey, uh, we're almost running out of time. Gary, you got another clip from Len Carlos now out there? Uh, actually, Mr. Parker, uh, Eileen was saying that uh, she watched uh, one of the episodes about uh, two, uh, two perspectives of the homo Borg in that show, and uh, she thinks that... Uh, that Rod kind of uh, looks like one of those handsome actors in the in the show. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, uh, let's let's roll it then. This is our third clip from I'm Carlos now. Let it roll. Let it roll. so much work to do, man. Like, I don't know that I have time to listen to this. Oh, you got time, man. Yeah, I, I know. I'm, 
you know, I got the same message you did about coming to this. But. Yeah, come on, it won't last long. This is important. I don't know, it doesn't, doesn't seem right to me. Something, what well, doesn't seem right? No, I don't think it's just like every assembly. No, no, it's not like that. The one last month, you know, that was that was run of the mill. This was, I don't know. I don't know if I like what I'm hearing right now. I like what I'm hearing pretty good. I don't know what you're, you're talking about. I mean, who is this guy? Anyway? Come on, just listen to him. What does it matter who we are? Listen to his message. Hear that? Death? Look, I, I know... I know things aren't, like, perfect with what we do, but... Look, it's, it's three days, you know, sit in our little pod, we do some work. I mean, you just get trapped into that mentality, man. You're never going to escape. You're just going to be Fix working, things, make things your better whole life. sometimes, you know. There's, I think there's a chance that things could improve. That's right. Yeah. Something just doesn't seem right to me. What do you mean? What I mean is, why why does this guy suddenly want to help us? Why not? He understands what we're going through. What we've been doing nonstop. Well, I know, years. I know that. I know we've been friends for a while. Alive and maybe even stay working for things. That's right. Salvation in death. Freedom from this oppressive, repetitive nonsense. Yeah, there's some strange signs in what he's saying. I mean. You know, uh, Lawrence, mm -hmm. kind of like, give me a heads up about this. He did. Told me this guy might be coming to pitch us a line like that. Yeah, you listen to Lawrence. Right, he said it was a trap. He said, don't go for it. He's just using you. He's trying to bring back the commerce class. The commerce class. I know there's no commerce class. I'm saying he's trying to bring back the commerce class to what cool. They weren't that bad anyway. I'd rather have the commerce class than this fucking nonsense. No, man. No. Commerce class? No way. I'm not for that. I don't know. I'm just really not sold about this. I'd really rather I think Lawrence is right on this. We just gotta keep our head down. Keep working. Make something of this situation. We're never gonna make something of this situation. I don't care what Lawrence says. This is the answer right here. Why don't you just listen? This guy anyway? doesn't even make any sense. Right. 
like death is going to make everything better. Yes, it would. And he just he just contradicted himself. I mean, no, he didn't. I don't. I don't even see how that's possible. Come on, I've known you for a long time. All of a sudden, what? This this speaks to you? This this guy? This maniac? He's not a maniac, okay? I got some programming to do. Yeah, you go ahead. Well, yeah, man, that was a really good scene. You know, uh, I can see what Eileen was saying about me looking like uh, the actor. In fact, uh, both the actors look pretty much the same to me. But uh, I thought it was, regardless, a pretty interesting scene. Uh, you know, it seemed like the disembodied uh, voice of Carlos talking to the board and those kind of decisions. You know, pretty interesting shit, man. One of the most dramatic scenes in, in the whole series. And this is when... This is when the homoborgs who have been chipped and who are highborgs, their immortality is threatened by Carlos, who offers them death. What's more dramatic than being offered death? Oh, I can't pretty heavy, much, dude. man. Yeah, it's pretty deep. You know, it might just fit. It might just fit your music, uh, that little theme. Um, you might. Yeah, you, really you know who did the music for uh, the show? Um, Paul Flum. Paul Flum did the music. You might want to check him out. He, oh, yeah? Yeah. I think I heard of him. Is he from Baltimore? Uh, he, well, no, he's from ASCAP. Oh, ASCAP. Yeah. Yeah, he's from ASCAP. He's pretty well covered, but, you know. Oh, man. Yeah. You got to have your licensing straightened out, folks. Yeah, yeah. Got to make sure you get paid. No, but, but that's cool. That's cool. No, I think, I think you guys could have a future together. I think so. I mean... Some oh. some great. Excuse great. me, guys. Uh, uh, Rod. Yeah. Uh, uh, your yeah. uh, your uh, entourage Enrique wants to know if he could take the Camaro out for a spin while you're doing the interview. He's getting a little restless. Back here. Uh, you know what? Tell him it's fine. You know. Yeah. He doesn't really know how to drive, but don't worry about it. Yeah. Right. Here's here's. Take your car? Oh no, he's just taking the Camaro. That's already a piece of shit. All right. The Chevelle is safe and sound. In the garage. Okay. Okay. You know, when, you know, there's a there's a clip where uh, uh, the guys are walking around a Goodwill store looking for a, a, a costume, like a. a oh yeah, a <laughs> I remember that. That was so funny. <laughs> Oh, I think okay. I've been to that Goodwill one time. Okay. Well, I mean, a shout out to Goodwill. Why not? I mean, uh, let it roll. Let it. Got, we ready? Are we ready, Gary? Okay. Hey, one more second, Miss Parker. Eileen, do we have the good, the Goodwill, the Goodwill clip? No, no, not Salvation Army. The Goodwill clip. We got. Okay, we got it. We got it. Ready to go, Mr. Parker? Anytime. Okay. Our fourth clip from I'm Carlos. Now here we roll. Roll. It. They, uh, you know, they, I had to leave the marshals in Patterson because the gumball gallery ratted me out to the FBI. So now I'm here and I'm trying to make contact with TR, but we're still out here trying to find, you know, some way to communicate with him. And it's becoming very, very difficult because of this FBI presence, because they're still investigating me for the drug sales back in New York. Right. The late 80s was perhaps TR's most interesting era. As we discussed, you know, in Hastings, he found numerous ways to tag train cars without, you know, being caught. And, you know, that's particularly remarkable when you think of how much, you know, the Hastings police cracked down on graffiti in the late 80s. Oh, this is interesting here. We have a 1996 Chicago Bulls t-shirt. A favorite of TR, correct? Ah, oh, well, I think he just took this color pattern for some of his early portraits of the greats. And Coons, he's just, he's just kitschy, you know? Right. 
He just all he does is just like you know some fancy shiny Madonna, you know, with whatever, and then you know he just like sells it for a million to Trump or to whoever, you know, just like anybody, any of those oligarchs. And really doing something different, innovating. Don't you think, Mr. Tr? I see an agent. I see an agent. I have to. Uh, I have to pretend like I. I like CDs. In order to uh, Isaac, Isaac Hayes is uh, quite a good one. Have you ever heard this, Clemente? Oh yes. Used to bump it in my younger years. You know, I don't know about this agent who's following me, but you know, it seems like I could be. You know, if they find me. She's not, she's not going to be good. Of records being destroyed as we walk by them. Oh, records just like TR used to have. He used to have a great collection of this man, David Oistrach. Hey, let's go take a look at the art, if you don't mind, Clemente, because really, you know, here at the Goodwill, we're really at the, the pinnacle, my friends, like the pinnacle of art. And most of the sure. art at galleries does not really compare to the art that found at Goodwill which I find to be particularly interesting. This is an eight by 10 piece. Right, right. I find this like this landscape very moving in a lot of ways. And in fact, I think TR should do a landscape series. I think it would be very lucrative, don't you? Another great style of painting that needs to be revisited by TR. Other artifacts such as Prodigy Derek Jeter. This is quite a New Jersey location. Oh, you know. This... Why did you associate it with? Oh, oh sport. Are you a fan, Mr. Arthur? I think I must buy this. Why is that? You have not told me. I need a man purse, Clemente. Is that true? <laughs> what are you carrying? That's why I put it back. Vintage um, beer steins are a really big obsession for me right now. Hmm. Is there any particular beer that you prefer? Well, you know, Schlitz would be really wonderful, but you know, I think they went out of business many years ago trying to find something urban in here. But then again, you could just go back and buy the hunting camo. Ah, oh, very true. And, and then I could really, really, you know, possibly blend in. There, right? yeah. I mean, there's a possibility I could blend in. Old radios, main lays, some hmm. portable uh, satellite devices that I've kind of rigged to avoid the kind of tracking that the FBI normally puts on all of my devices so that they can find me and bust me for my previous life as a cocaine trafficker. Well, I mean, you know, New York, of course. I dealt a lot with Brooklyn, but there were a lot of Canadians who bought from me, especially these Canadian DJs known as the Visible Underground. And Visible Underground really, to a large extent, you know, contributed a lot to my reason why I was so, you know, deep in the coke game. I mean, let's be real, if it weren't for, you know, Visible Underground, there'd there would be no drug career. Ah, oh, it's very possible. I heard that their clubs did really well. They had one on 146th and Broadway back in the day. And I heard that was, you know, an impeccable club, like a really good time, and it was all Baroque themed. It all looked like a Versace shirt patterned out onto a club. I'm really looking for a good disguise. Well, I feel like the Neva Press shirt that you just passed on. Oh, really? It's fantastic. You know, you know, you did tell me the 70s are back in, Clemente. I mean, you would know. I mean, you are the one who actually is allowed to spend time in New York at this point, unlike me. Well, Clemente, well. at this point, I must buy a disguise and get out of here. <laughs> oh, man. Wow, that was <laughs> You got come. I mean, you got it all with that oh, Carlos. Chris, Chris Parker, I, I got Mindy. yes, care, yes, care. I, I, I got Mark and Mindy in the in the in the call, and he says Mark and Mindy. They, they're, is it, they're gonna, I uh, love Mark and they're Mindy. Gonna, they're gonna no Mark and Mindy downtown. They're saying they're gonna cancel the show until unless we get Rod's uh, video plan. We well, let, well, oh, we've got time. Let, 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 we've having yeah, a so great time. Video, man. What's, Come what's, on. what's it called, what's Gary? What's it called? Uh, Mr. Parker, you should have that, but it's uh, called Brown Scar by. Uh, Rod Bunch and Eccles Wolf. Oh, there we go. Brown this... Scarf by... By those guys. Bunch and Wolf. Roll it.
Welcome back, Spielunkers. Welcome back, you Yardbirds. Well, wasn't that great? Wasn't that great? And hey, what'd you think of the video, man? Oh, hot. It's hot. I can see why you're way at the top. Yeah, the real high budget thing. Yeah. As you can tell. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I want to thank all the Big Daddy's fans out there. We, we just, this, every show gets better and better and better. Call in, we'll get your clips from Carlos now in the next episode. And, hey, I'm going to leave it to Ron. All right, well, uh, thanks for tuning in, uh, watching the video, and uh, lots of my favorite show. I'm Carlos now. Uh, you know, by the record, guys, you know, so I'm saying it comes out December 28th in stores near you. Buy that shit. It's going to be awesome. That's a wrap, folks. That's a wrap. We'll see you next week. And don't do anything I wouldn't do. See ya. Bye now. Bye.